In this video, we're going to give a brief overview of transistors and how transistors operate. A transistor is a three-terminal device made from semiconductors. This is a picture of the uh, first transistor, at least the first documented transistor. It was uh, made operational on December 23rd of 1947 at Bell Labs in New Jersey. During the next 60 plus years since the transistor was first invented, transistor technologies exploded. exploded. Gordon Moore, a co-founder of Intel Corporation, is credited with observing that over the history of computing hardware, the number of transistors on integrated circuits doubles approximately every two years. The law is named after Gordon Moore, who described this trend in a 1965 paper. It's known as Moore's Law. Transistors are the heart and soul, the basic fun functional unit of integrated circuits and computer chips. There are two basic types of transistors that perform basically the voltage-controlled switching function, but in different ways. The bipolar junction transistor, or BJT, and the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or the MOSFET. Current technologies allow us to place over 2.5 billion transistors on a single silicon chip. The bipolar junction transistor, or BJTs, are typically three terminal devices with the terminals that are labeled collector, base, and emitter. The collector and the emitter are heavily doped, in the, in the case of the NPN transistor, heavily doped with N-type dopants. The base, on the other hand, is very narrow and is lightly doped with a P-type dopant. This construction effectively gives us then two PN junctions, one here and one here. And thus effectively we have two diodes with a base having the uh, positive terminal of both of them. The schematic symbol for a BJT transistor is this. When we're looking at a schematic, the emitter will always have the, the arrowhead on it and the arrowhead will be pointing in the direction of current flow. This is a cross-sectional side view of an NPN transistor showing the connecting terminals on the collector, the base, and the emitter. And here you can see its actual construction where the base is thin and lightly doped, in this case in a P-type, with a relatively highly doped emitter and a highly doped collector surrounding the P, the uh, P region. And here again you've got the PN junction between the base and the collector and the PN junction between the base and the emitter. To understand how transistors operate, consider this NPN transistor connected as shown. Note that the base here is connected to a variable DC voltage source through a resistor that we'll call R sub B. We define the current I sub B as the current flowing into the base. The collector is connected through a collector resistor R sub C to a positive voltage VCC. The current I sub C is referenced into the collector. And then the emitter is in this case tied to ground or the lowest voltage in this circuit. And here we've referenced the current I sub E as the current leaving the emitter. To analyze the operation of this transistor in this circuit, we're going to start by increasing or start increasing this DC voltage. Starting at zero, the voltage at the base and the voltage at the emitter are both equal to zero. And this PN junction then will not be forward biased. And as such, it will not be active. There will be no current flowing from the base to the emitter. As long as the, the voltage on the base is relatively small, substantially less than the 7 tenths of a volt, and the collector voltage here is significantly higher than that, there will be this uh, PN junction will be reverse biased and there will be no current flowing across this junction. If there's no current flowing, flowing from the collector into the base, there will be no current flowing into the collector itself and the voltage across this resistor then will be zero. If there's no voltage drop across this resistor, this resistor then pulls the collector voltage up to VCC. In fact, these resistors, in, when they function in this role, are called pull-up resistors. So in this state, with V sub B zero or significantly less than the uh, 
seven tenths of a volt that would be necessary to forward bias this PN junction here. The transistor is considered to be cut off, and there is no current flowing through the transistor. We'll now start to gradually increase the voltage here, VBB. And as it increases, it starts to increase the voltage here at the emitter, at the base. At some point, this PN junction is going to become forward biased, or at least start to conduct, as the voltage here gets or approaches the 7 tenths of a volt. As this, as this um, PN junction here then becomes forward biased, electrons will flow from lower voltage to higher voltage. Note here that we're talking about the electron flow, not the traditional or the conventional current flow, which involves positive charge flowing in the opposite direction. So recall positive charge flows from higher to lower voltages, and negative charge or electron charge flows from lower voltages to higher voltages. So with this voltage here, uh, approaching the 7 tenths of a volt, it allows conventional current to flow this way, or in fact what's happening is electrons are then moving into this lightly doped, very narrow base region. Now at this point, current will start to flow through here, but it's still a relatively small current. And so the voltage here at the collector is still going to be relatively large and close to VCC. So if we've got a relatively small voltage, 7 tenths of a volt here, and a relatively large voltage here, this PN junction here will still be reverse biased and will not get significant current traveling through here because of the re inverse reverse biasing. But an interesting thing happens here at the base interface. We have then, at this point, a the collector voltage is greater than the base voltage. And so the electrons that then move across this PN junction between the base and the emitter in this very narrow, lightly doped base region are exposed to this relatively large voltage differential and are swept across the base and out the collector. So we then, as this, as this PN junction becomes forward biased, yet this PN junction is still reverse biased, you still get significant current flowing due to the fact that this junction here allows electrons in, and the electrons then feel this voltage and are pulled or swept into the collector. This state, where this, this PN junction is forward biased and this one is reverse biased, is known as the active mode of operation, or the transistor is said to be in the active region. In this mode of operation, the current through the transistor, again representing by, represented or consisting of electrons coming across the PN junction and then being swept on through, the current through the transistor is controlled by the base to emitter voltage and effectively the current from the uh, voltage source here coming into the base. In this active region, small changes in the voltage across the base to emitter junction um, reflect themselves in large changes in current, just as we saw with the diode. Small voltage changes across an active diode, small voltage changes across that diode are reflected in large increases in current. In the active state, the collector current I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B, or I sub C is equal to beta I sub beta times I sub B, where beta is a physical, physical property of the transistor and is a relatively large number. Betas can range from anywhere around 40 on up to 100 or 200. So that means that in the active region, the collector current is equal to a very large number times I sub B. This then, the I sub C is a, a scale version of I sub B, we say that the transistor is acting as an amplifier or acting in an amplification mode. And the transistor is acting as an amplifier. The current flowing through the transistor causes a voltage drop across R sub C, the resistor connecting the collector to VCC. 
This voltage drop then pushes the voltage of the collector down. And the voltage of the collector then, right there, is equal to, or call it V sub C, is equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which is I sub C times R sub C, where this resistor is the collector resistance R sub C. Continuing to increase VBB, then increases I sub B. That, re that increase in I sub B is reflected through an amplified version of I sub C. So that as we continue to increase the voltage here at the base, the voltage at the collector is uh, continually then pushed down, lower and lower. This has two effects. First, the base emitter junction becomes more forward biased as V sub B gets larger. Again, small changes in voltages here, small increases in voltage, are reflected in large changes in current through the transistor. Once again, that increased current here then makes for a larger voltage drop across the resistor, pushing V sub C down. The second effect is that this push down voltage of the collector, even lower, reduces the reverse bias state on the uh, base to collector junction. As we continue to increase V sub B, at some point the voltage from the base to the collector gets great enough that this PN junction then becomes forward biased and electrons then are free to flow in this direction across the, plant, the, uh, the junction and effectively flood this lightly doped P region flooding it with electrons to the point that all the holes are filled up, and at that point the transistor is said to be saturated. It's saturated with electrons, it's lost its PNP or its two PN junction characteristics. And we no longer think of it as being a PNP structure, but rather just a continuous channel of N-type semiconductor that's capable of carrying current. This region where both of the PN junctions are forward biased so that the base is saturated is known as the saturation mode of the transistor. Once the transistor is saturated, increasing V sub B and thus increasing I sub B no longer results in an increased I sub C. In other words, the base voltage no longer controls the current flowing through the transistor because no longer do we have these PN junctions. At this point, the current flowing through the transistor becomes a function of the source voltage, the size of the, of the resistor here, and the saturation voltage across the, across the transistor. At this point, current flowing through it results in a saturated or a, effectively a constant voltage that is a function of the physical characteristics of the transistor. This voltage from the collector to the emitter under saturated conditions is known as VCE sat, and it will be on the order of one-tenth to two-tenths of a volt. Again, that saturation voltage is a function of the concentrations of doping, the size of the transistors, and other electrical characteristics of the transistor itself. But at this point, that VCE sat, for our purposes, is going to be a constant value that will be associated with the transistor. To review what we've covered so far, let's just draw a graph plotting the base voltage V sub B to the collector current here, I sub C. As we start raising V sub B from zero on up to about seven tenths of a volt, there is no significant capacitor current or uh, collector current. As the PN junction here becomes forward biased, current starts to flow through the transistor. And I sub C then is a function of I sub B. In this region here, I sub C is equal to beta times I sub B. When the base voltage gets to the point that both junctions are forward biased, the transistor then enters the saturated mode, where increasing V sub B does not lead to an increase in current through the capacitor, we say that the, or through the capacitor, through the uh, transistor, and we say that the transistor is saturated. So this region right here 
is known as the cutoff region. This region in here is known as the active, or you'll also sometimes hear, to, hear it referred to as the linear region of the transistor. And then this region right here is the saturation region. And in the saturated region, the voltage across the transistor is basically constant at somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2 tenths of, or between 0.1 and 0.2 volts. Our discussion about transistors thus far has referred to a transistor known as an NPN transistor, where the collector and emitter were heavily doped with N-type dopants, and the base was doped with a very narrow P, or positive type, dopant. There's also a PNP transistor, and it's sort of just the opposite structure. Now the collector and the emitter are heavily doped with P-type dopants. And the base, once again, is very narrow and lightly doped, but this time it's doped with an N-type. Thus, we have the PNP um, model. In the PNP transistor, we still have PN junctions, representing two back-to-back -back diodes. But this time, the diodes are referenced plus P to N and P to N. Note the schematic symbol for the PNP transistor still has the base, the collector, and the emitter. The emitter, the emitter still has the uh, arrowhead on it. But for the PNP, the arrow is directed into the transistor, representing the conventional current flowing from the emitter to the collector. In PNP transistors, in the PNP transistors, the direction of current flow and the reference direction of voltages are all opposite to those of the NP or NPN transistors. As I've already pointed out, the emitter current is referenced into the emitter, the base current is referenced out of the base, and the collector current is referenced out of the collector. You'll notice also in the PNP configuration that the highest voltage of the, in the uh, configuration is now at the emitter and the lowest voltage is at the collector. Consistent with that, the voltage on the base needs to then be drawn lower to forward bias this PN junction. So this side of the junction is at a high voltage, the P side, and the N side, in order for it to be forward biased, the N side has to have a lower voltage than the P side. So then we're pulling this point down by decreasing the voltage here, VBB. Other than that, the analysis for the PNP transistor is analogous to that of the NPN transistor. It's just that negative voltages create currents that flow in the opposite direction in a PNP transistor.